is Steve Yulberg for Dulcimer Crossing and in our String Side Up Absolute Beginner Series we're taking a look at how to hold our hammers. I've got two different kinds of hammers here. The first kind are flexible. You can see it's got a flexible shaft. There's no handle. There is a one, it's single sided and it's got some suede on one side. The other side's just flat. This hammer is double sided. It's got a nice handle down here so I know where I want to put my fingers. It's got bare wood on one side and it's got thick suede on the other side. They demonstrate, and we're going to take a look at uh, many, many more kinds of hammers in another lesson, but in this one we just want to focus on how do I hold the darn hammers and keep track of where they are. All of us have one hand that is more dominant than the other one, and you can tell which one that is by how you sign your name on a check. Some of us are more ambidextrous, some of us are left-handed, some of us are right-handed, some of us can use both hands, or one hand is preferred for one thing and the other hand is preferred for the other. For the hammer dulcimer, you need both hands to do a lot of work. And it's tempting to have your favorite hand do all the work and your other hand not do much. But if you have the proper grip on your hammer, you're going to be a long way to the being able to play equally well with both hammers, which is going to be the best way you want to play anyway. So, here's what I do. I hold my hammers between my thumb and my first finger. My thumb follows, is points down the shaft of the hammer. My first finger is making a T. It's perpendicular to the hammer, and it's underneath. And when I play this way, the hammer doesn't want to move back and forth and slide sideways, even if it's the hand that I don't trust the most. If I try to play with my hands to the side like this, one of the things I notice is that they start, every time when they come back up, it's real easy for them to spin because I don't have much contact. I don't have the same kind of control of the hammer. And then I get kind of nervous and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep track of where the hammer is and I'm trying to hit the right string and it's just way too much to worry about. So if you hold with your thumb pointing down the shaft of the hammer, the first finger making a T, that's going to be a good solid grip in there. Now some people hold toward the back end of the hammer. Some people choke up like I was there. In fact, I took a workshop once with Zhao Jining, who learned in the conservatory in China how to play with bamboo flying sticks on the Chinese version of the instrument called the Yang Qin. And for the two-hour workshop, the first hour and a half were about committing to your hammers. And in his case, what they did was wrap these three fingers around the hammer, and the thumb and the first finger were out in front, just like that. And they had control of the hammer. Now that's a whole lot more hand on these size, these size of hammers than I want, so I don't wrap all my fingers around there. There are some people that use a third or fourth finger down below to flip the back hand, the back end of the hammer, to really get an accent. That's not the way I play, but it can be very effective if that's something you want to try. Go ahead and try it. The key thing to do, though, is to keep a good grip to begin with, so you're not going to lose control of the hammer. Now, this is the way a lot of people play, but some people play with a hammer between their first and second fingers instead of between their thumb and first finger. In fact, in the Cimbalum world, which is the eastern part of Europe, which is one of the highest developed versions of the hammer dulcimer, this is the normal way to play. In the Dutch hop part of the world, where, where I live right now, the Germans from Russia tradition, they play with their first fingers, the hammer between the first and second finger. Um, let's see, uh, in the Samtir world, in Iran, they do the same thing. Now, they have, because there's this nice little groove there, it's really easy to slip between the fingers, and some of the Samtir players, or the Dutch hop players, or the Chimbalem players, will have more of a, a thing that comes around the finger to keep it from moving back and forth. But it's easy to let the hammer just move freely when you're between your first and second fingers, just like between your thumb and your first finger. I had a student once who wasn't able, because of arthritis, to play holding with her thumb anymore. She adapted. Put it between her fingers, plays marvelously. I had another student who grew up in the Dutch hop tradition here in Colorado, and he played with one hand in the Dutch hop way, one hand in the American or the Western way, and he could never get the other hand to play it the other way, so he just plays perfectly well 
with two different hammer grips. I encourage you to experiment and see which one works for you. Now, one of the things you'll notice as you're experimenting with your hammer grips is that one hand of yours is dominant. The one you sign your check with, the one if you're going to draw a map for somebody, the first hand that you pick up to grab the pen with or the pencil is probably your dominant hand. Now, there's a large portion of the population who are right-handed, smaller portion that are left-handed. There's a portion of the population who are now right-handed who started out left-handed and were forced to be right-handed. There are people who use both hands fairly evenly well. It's different for different people. On the hammer dulcimer, though, both hands need to do work. And what can be uh, a tempting or alluring is to trust your, your dominant hand to do most of the work and let the other one not do a whole lot. Kind of sit on the bench and just run in to do a play here and there, like in a sports team. But what's going to serve you best is if both hands are equally capable of playing. So you're going to want to have a good grip with both hands and not just the hand you trust. And your exercises that you're going to do are going to help you work both hands equally well. So now let's turn our attention to some of those exercises so we can play the way we want to play. Mm -hmm.